Hey guys, this is Mr. Myosis here, and in this video, I want to talk to you about doing a two-sample t-test. And the two-sample t-test that I'm going to do, <clears throat> and also I'm also going to do a two-sample t-interval, is for um, two samples that are independent and have equal variances. So um, those of you in my class, you don't really need to worry about the equal variances thing, um, but in other classes, especially in college, you might have to determine whether or not we're using, we have equal variances or we don't have equal variances. It's pretty easy to tell depending on the, the um, standard deviation of each one. So um, in this case, I'm gonna do an unequal variance, so not equal variances and independent groups for a two sample t-test for means, all right? So uh, let's take a look at my example and we will uh, go through that and the confidence interval. So let's take a look. Here I go, I have my problem up here and resting pulse rates for a random sample of 26 smokers had a mean of 80 beats per minute and a standard deviation of five beats per minute. Among 32 randomly chosen non-smokers, the mean and standard deviations were 74 and six beats per minute. Both sets were roughly symmetric and no, had no outliers. Is there evidence of a difference in mean pulse rates between smokers and non-smokers? And then furthermore, how big was that difference? So <clears throat> we are looking at we, there's a keyword, right? Is there evidence? Now, we see that word, is there evidence, then we know we're going to do a hypothesis test. Um, so let's take a look at what we have. <clears throat> we have statistics in this case. Now, in my class, we've been doing a one-sample t-test with, um, with actual data that we would have to deal with, but this is a case where we're not given data, we're just giving the statistics for each of the groups. So let's take a look. In this group, in group one, we have 26 smokers. So uh, group one, group one is the smoking group, right? That one has smokers. And group two is non-smokers. So in group one, let's uh, write down the statistics in that group. Um, we have X1 bar is going to be 80 beats per minute. Um, S X bar X one bar. I'm oh, sorry. S X one is going to be five beats per minute. Now, what is that? You might be asking. That is my standard deviation of the first group, and then my number of participants in that group was 26. Let's write these out. X two bar <clears throat> is 74 beats per minute. S S X two is six beats per minute. Ah, what am I having problems with this BPMs? And then N2 is going to be 32. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, if you saw my previous video on one sample t-test, you might be thinking to yourself, what is the degrees or what are the degrees of freedom for a two sample? Well, it's a little bit tricky, guys. Um, the degrees of freedom get kind of, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a, a messy formula to find the degrees of freedom for a two sample um, t-test of independent groups. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the calculator do our work for us and then just kind of write it in. I know it seems like it's cheating, but you know, hey, we're, they're not gonna ask you on the AP exam really to find the degrees of freedom for two sample t-independence. So here, here's what we do. Our first thing is we need our null and our alternative hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is that um, group one will be mu1, right? Mu1 is equal to mu2, right? So that there is a there is is not a difference. You can also write that if you want. Mu1 minus mu2 equals 0. Our 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 I our I can't even say our our alternative hypothesis is mu2 mu1, sorry. <clears throat> mu1 is not equal to mu2. You can also say mu1 minus mu2 is not equal to zero. All right, so we have that. Now we need to go to our next part. What are assumptions and conditions? Assumptions, and I'm gonna type these out again because it's a lot quicker than writing them all out like that, okay? So, move my pad here to the side. All right, so what, what are, what, again, with language here, what are the assumptions and conditions? <clears throat> well, 
they really are the same as our one sample t-test, only we got to deal with two of them. So our first one is randomization. Okay, and it says that each sample of smokers and <coughs> non-smokers were selected at random. Okay, so it says that right here in our in our problem. Our second one is our 10% condition. Uh, we're going to go ahead and assume that 26 and 32 are less than 10% of all non-smokers and smokers. Oops. Respectively. It's like later in one sentence. Our third one is, uh, what's our third condition? Sorry about my air conditioner, guys. Um, my third condition is nearly normal. So um, both distributions were said to be roughly symmetric and had no outliers. Now, where did I get that information from? I got it from right up here. So the fact that it says it, I don't have to draw any histograms. Um, so I don't have to show that they are unimodal and symmetric. I can just say that they are because the problem said that they were. And finally, I do have a fourth one. <clears throat> and I'll scroll down a little bit so we can see what's going on. All right, my fourth one is, oh, come on. Let's see if I can get this to work here. All right, well, I'll just write here. Our fourth one is that it is independent groups. And it's pretty, it's pretty obvious that <coughs> there were no participants that were in both the non-smoking and smoking groups. I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? If you're a non-smoker, then you're a non-smoker. You're not going to be in the smoking group. If you're a smoker, you're not going to be in the, And we're not really looking at people who quit. So uh, this is it's pretty clear it's independent. All right, so now that we, and again, you know, it's not perfect here, but now that we have our four assumptions and conditions cleared out, we're going to go into our mechanics. Now, the, before we do that, we want to make sure that we explain which test we are going to use. So we're going to say, we will use a two sample independent groups t-test for means. All right, so we're explaining what we're doing. All right, so let's go ahead and go into the mechanics of the whole thing. All right, <clears throat> and so I'm gonna go into another page here so that we have Oh, here we go. I'll just drop down a little bit. Um, so here are here are the mechanics. Now, what do we need to do for this? Well, we need to make sure that we have our t. So that's our big thing: is that we need to find our t, and our t value for these is going to be. x1 minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 all over the standard error of the difference. Now, that's, this is a, a little tricky formula. The standard error of the difference is going to be the square root of s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. Now that comes from our variances. And um, we, I think in class, I, I might have gone over this, I'm not sure. Um, but we have, since we have different variances and we're adding them together, it's kind of like the Pythagorean theorem of stats. This is how we find our standard error. Okay, so then we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and plug in what we know. All right, we have 80, 85 and 26. Okay, so, um, 80, 
minus 74 minus <clears throat> 0, right? <laughs> the difference here is going to be 0 because that's our null hypothesis over the square root of S1, which I believe was 5. So 5 squared over 26 plus um, 6 squared over 32. All right, so now that we plug this in, we're going to actually let our calculator do all the work for us. All right, so we're going to find this T, T score here, <clears throat> here. Excuse me, I got a little cold. And we're going to find the probability that that T is not equal to Okay, so, um, so basically um, <clears throat> greater than and less than whatever the value that we get there. So now we're going to run this in the calculator, <coughs> let it do all the work for us. This is enough work here to show that you kind of know what you're dealing with. Um, if you want to, you can also draw your T model and shade in all of this stuff once we find our T score. All right. So let's go and do that. Let's go to our calculator. And I kind of have it here already, but I'm going to show you how to do that. So we go to menu, statistics, stat tests, and we have a two sample t test. So it's number four in our TI Inspire. Two sample t test. We are not using data, we are using stats. Um, our X1 was, go back here, our X1 was 80. So our X1 was 80, our S1 <coughs> was 5, and our N1 was 30, 26. Our X2 was 74, and our S2 was 6, and our N2 was 30, I believe it was 32. Okay, hit OK, and then it gives us all the information that we need. So up here, we have our T value, which is 4.15. So over here, we're going to come back and we're going to put that in right here. 4.15. It also, we go back over here, it gives us our degrees of freedom, which is 55.953. So I'm going to go out here and I'm just going to write on the side here. Degrees of freedom was 55.193, I believe it said. 953. And then um, our T, we're going to put down here, 4.15. And since we're looking for that probability, we're going to go back to our calculator and see that our p-value was 0 0.0001. So I'll write that down here. 0 0.000113 is our p-value. So now that we have the information, that was our mechanics, we can write our conclusion. And the conclusion is, oh, you know what, guys? I didn't show you something. Let's come back over here. Um, when we do this, statistics, stat test, uh, two sample t test, um, when I put in this information, you have to scroll down and make sure that you put your alternative hypothesis in. Now, I already knew that it defaults to not equal to, but you might need to change it depending on what you're doing. Um, when it says pulled right now, we're saying no because we're doing the one with non-equal, with with uh, different variances. So we're just going to leave it as no, okay? So uh, make sure that you make sure you do that when you look at that. Okay, so uh, now we're going to write our conclusion. And our conclusion is we have a small p-value with a p-value. So small, and again, we always want to make sure that we, we reflect back on that p-value. We put that in there. We are going to reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence that the heart rates, that's what we're talking about, right? that the, ugh, sometimes I hate this program, guys, that the mean um, 
heart rate of smokers and non-smokers is different on average. All right? So that's our conclusion. Now, if we ran a, a confidence interval, we would tell how much that is different. So um, what we do is we run the confidence interval and we see how what that confidence interval is and that will tell us how big that difference is. So uh, we will do a confidence interval on the next video or actually we're gonna do one in class. Uh, we actually did one in class, so this is just a step of, from that. So um, I might make another video and showing you how to do a confidence interval, but I really wanted to go over doing a uh, an entire uh, hypothesis test. So that's it for me, guys. We'll see you next time. Um, catch you later. Bye.